Hey, what's up, Ron here. Wind is howling, and today I got a really fun uh, painting process for you. Uh, so I have painted, as you can see here, the rapper Little Dicky, and you've probably seen this one in the short video I, I posted, um, where basically I get a lot of comments saying I look like him. So I thought it would be a fun process uh, to try and, and paint him. Uh, so this actually ended up being a very nice portrait, which is why I think it's a good... Um, demonstration to share with you on the the process itself. Um, the process isn't that complex. Uh, I did it black and white to make things a whole lot easier for me because portraits are tough as is, but I am following a very simple kind of uh, work process. So I'm starting by establishing a basic division into light and shadow. So the entire right side of the face is more in the shadow compared to the left. So I'm almost treating this. You've seen me multiple times uh, posterizing uh, my reference photo to make the values a little simpler. I'm almost treating it as a black and white uh, division. Now, there is nuance in the value here. This is a black and white photo. It's not a posterized photo. It's not a, a it's, it's not a black and white. It's a grayscale one. There's everything in between. But in order to simplify the process, I'm treating it as if there is a black and white parts to it. That will help me better see the shapes I'm painting for the next stages. What does this mean? That I will need to darken some areas more and I may even need to lighten or bring back some highlights, okay? But the process is very simple. It's just a division between light and dark. I wonder if you can hear the wind howling. It's a really cool sound. Um, so. This means it looks super awkward right now. And I want you to remember these moments where it does not look right. And just have in mind that when you have a process, you follow it, you see it through, and you judge the result at the end, okay? You postpone that disbelief and you just keep going. Now I use the water sprayer to help me expand the wash upwards while I'm still aware that the bottom part is drying and I have to be very mindful of that. I did want, however, to paint the shadowy side of the face and the hair together, which is something you'll see me often do. I learned this from observing a lot of portrait painting processes and myself from my own experience. And I just love when there is some connectivity in the very initial layer, okay? Now, I am starting to approach the mouth area and this is a very confusing one. So this is where I do recommend posterizing or editing a photo because doing this interpretive work I'm doing right now, it's not easy, especially when you focus on maintaining one big shape. So you don't have to maintain one big shape. You can let some edges dry and work slowly at your own pace. Once you feel advanced enough or at any moment, you can decide to paint like this, right? Just know that it may be a bit more challenging, a lot more um, things to juggle. Okay, but this mouth area and the chin and the beard is where it confused me the most and this will show. You will see me struggling with the shapes over there and that's fine. I want you to not get discouraged. Shapes are confusing and the face has so many planes and they all face in different directions. That it sometimes can be very hard. So my focus is get the shape of light and shadow and play around with the edges as you see me doing now, softening some edges, you know, going darker, uh, going smoother or sharper with some. Now I'm gonna continue this left side of the hair that has already dried. So I'm just continuing the wash. This won't be as visible, this fragmentation, because a darker wash is gonna cover it. But this line, however, is important. I wanna show the edge of the face, okay? And now lastly, to wrap up this light and dark concept, uh, I'm gonna start in, in um, bringing out the shadows in the light side. So that's where the eyebrow and eye and the above the nose, the bridge here, all of these areas should be a little darker. Now I actually go quite light here, just for fun. That's how I felt like doing it. Very often I'll do something that doesn't necessarily make logical sense, but I'm carried away by the process. And it's a decision you make to get carried away by the process. And I love when I'm able to make that decision and really devote myself to what I'm doing and being all immersed in that, okay? That can be me, by the way, listening to music and it puts me in the zone. It could be me being in silence, put me in the zone, or it's just a mood I have. Um, learn what you enjoy and what you love. Lean into your enjoyment. That will make your painting processes much better. Um, it will make them more immersive. This is about fun. 
if it's not fun, ask yourself, why am I not enjoying myself? Why am I not having fun? Because that's the first goal of painting. Uh, to me, is just to have fun and maybe express myself, right? Or channel whatever it is, because it's not even me. I'm setting myself aside from the process in a way, uh, which is interesting. So I'm continuing with this. We're going to treat this whole thing as one layer, okay? Where I'm establishing lights and darks. Once we're done with this layer, we can start looking at the in intricacies of shapes. Um, the way I approach this section is it's so, and you know me, you know how I like to paint by now, it's so much to the side of the scene that I'm smoothing out a lot of edges. I'm not necessarily looking for a lot of hard edges there. So I'm bringing in water. Whenever you're confused with the details, bring in a little water. It will save your life. Trust me. <laughs> That's true for life in general. I mean, water is important. Um, so now we're starting to move on to the second wash where we can start showing some of the more nuanced shapes. So I'm starting by establishing this shape and then look at what I'm doing before I'm expanding, as I always recommend, take care of the edges now, not later when you have a big shape to deal with now. Get the edges perfectly and move on. And I didn't even get them perfectly here. I got them decent. They're going to dry a little too hard later on and I'll have to soften them again, but that's fine. Now, um, the way I think about this next wash, and I know a lot of people are sometimes deterred or scared by the second wash in particular, because that's when you are making decisions, right? This first wash had a lot of decision making in it, but very often it's more of an underpainting and it's a little easier seeing the major shapes, but here you're committing, right? So the way I do this is I don't necessarily have a predetermined route I go by. I'm looking for the thing that makes me want to paint it next. So if a clear shape pops um, in front of my eyes, I go with that. So something very clear was th that shadow on the side of the nose and how it connects to the eye and around the cheek. That was something that really popped for me. And so I decided I do that next. Um, I m might as well have started with the hair or the neck or the beard. Doesn't matter. OK, um, there there are no right answers. There are no wrong answers. You have to find your own answers in a way, um, which is something I always try and find a balance of. I'm showing you, I'm demonstrating a process, but you'll have to produce your own insights as to how that fits in with your life in general, because you may disregard everything I'm doing here, but maybe you'll think of a concept that will make you um, rethink something you're doing or maybe doing something a little better, right? So I'm expanding this shape and, and this is where it gets confusing, right? The, ma the mouth, the chin. Again, this is an area where I did not have personally enough clarity. So you'll see me struggling a bit with that. What I do know is that there are some deep shadows around the teeth, around the beard, around here the chin, you know, <laughs> we have the same pretty much beard. Uh, so it's funny, it's, it's like painting something familiar. We also have a similar nose. Yes, 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 we look kind of similar in a way. Um, so shut over the nose, smoothen it out with a damp brush. Okay, sometimes I'll pre wet, sometimes I'll wet after the fact. Um, every time I'll, I'll go for something a little different. Now, I want to make a distinction here between uh, painting something accurately and getting the likeness. So whenever you paint a person, getting the likeness, like getting it 100% like that person is going to be tough because there are plenty of nuances in the human face. So don't worry if it doesn't look the same. Focus more on did I get the impression of realism at first? Uh, do the light and shadows make sense, right? Are my shapes making sense? Uh, are my edges uh, expressing what I want to express? The cheek is round, so I have a smooth edge there, right? The teeth are sharp, so it's sharp, dark shapes. And uh, those are the things you, you may find beneficial focusing on. Um, getting the likeness down, even here, where this process to me was a, a nice success, I like the end result, I wouldn't say the likeness is 100%. Definitely not. Maybe it's 80%, maybe it's 85 which is quite high, but also not 100%. So people may recognize little Dicky here, uh, but many people won't probably. Um, so yeah. And I'm continuing this pattern of first wash, second wash. Now, something interesting happens the more you progress into the painting process. The more details you add, the clearer the picture becomes. The better you can understand what do you want to improve? 
what do you want to add? What do you want to correct? And you're going to see this in a few moments. For now, I am blending the edge of the hair because I want to, again, pull attention towards the center. So the top right corner is blurry. Top bottom corner, also blurry. I'm doing some wet and wet here. You'll see in a second that I'm pointing at the screen. Uh, that really looks good. And you'll see why because you're going to see it right now. This is damp area with super thick paint right out from the well these shapes are going to spread really nicely. And whenever you see someone doing clouds in a sunset scene where they do spread out a bit, look at this, look at how it looks. They do spread out a bit, but they maintain like 80% of their shape. That's how it's done. And I love this effect. Uh, so now, once I darken the hair, look at what becomes apparent, right? There are a lot of areas in the face that I'd like to darken up, right? Uh, even the shadow um, on the side of the nose, the, some details there, uh, the nostrils, you know, everything. The, of course, the irises, the eyelids, the pupils, the uh, eyelashes, all of these need um, clarification because right now they're still not there. And again, this is why you don't want to judge your painting until it's 100% done. We're following a set process. The process may not be clear and it may change as it develops, but there is a process and you are aware that you can continue, right? And I always say that like one simple way of figuring it out is, is this area dark enough? Is it too dark? Is this area dark enough? Is it too dark? This area dark enough, you just go area by area by area. You'll find all your mistakes, trust me. Especially if you're working black and white, it's easier to see. Look at the hair, how it dried, top right corner. I love that effect. I love that effect and ideally I wouldn't add much to it, if at all. Because this is watercolor at its finest, right? That, that kind of afro effect that just spreads out a bit. It's actually not a fro. It's something a little different. I think it's just curly hair. Um, I have a similar kind of type of hair, of course. Uh, so I know that's what my hair does as well. Uh, so I'm going to add in those darks that we discussed. So I'm putting in uh, <coughs> the dark beard. What I often find, this is where experience helps. Um, sometimes you want to just observe but other times you will recognize patterns that you've seen before. And one pattern I've noticed many times before is usually the darkest thing in this kind of a portrait is the beard on the shadowy side. So I immediately know that this is the area that will require some darkening. Now, if you look at the shadow on the side of the nose, it could be dark as well. But to me, I'm not that obsessed over having the accurate local value. I'm more... Um, um, I'm more concerned with the contextual value. How does the nose value compare to a different area of value too? So essentially I'm making the entire painting just a little bit lighter, if that makes sense. Uh, sometimes I'll feel like I need to darken it as much as, so that it exactly matches the, um, the, the reference photo. But most of the time I'm not that, you know, terribly worried about these kinds of things. Um, now you'll notice how just darkening some of these areas that need a darkening, you know, the eyebrows and the, the very, some very nuanced shadows can have a big impact. This is why getting the likeness isn't necessarily easy because all of these small things have a big, big impact. Um, so again, worry about the thing that is correct to worry about at this moment is what I'm saying, right? Don't beat yourself over things that are beyond your control. Don't beat yourself over things that, that are hard to control. Um, you have to kind of play around with it, find your own balance. But we're getting really close to the end of this process. Um, the one thing that is left is to bring out those subtleties and the small shapes of shadow. And for that, you need some patience. You need to scan it, look at it, figure out what's bothering you even, not just what's inaccurate. Maybe you don't like a certain shape, you wanna fix that. Um, some patience is ne needed and some willingness to observe, do you, are you even interested, clean my camera, are you even interested in observing and figuring out what you want to change, right? Because some people are just too impatient. They just think about, okay, what's next, what's next, what's next? Look at what you have on paper, right? Is there something that, that you want to change? Forget about needs. You don't have to do anything. You don't need to do anything, right? What do you, do you want to achieve? Uh, so to me, the smile was lacking. It wasn't strong enough. So I strengthened this shadow here with the, you know, when you smile, you get this shadow uh, under the cheek. All of these things matter, right? This shadow on the right side of the pupil of his left eye, which is to our right. It matters. All of these small eyelashes showing and little intricate shadows. It matters. To me, it was important. Um, 
the thing I'll always try and push you towards, I think, is just answers aren't out there. The answers are with you. And you have to reach out and grab them. You won't find any do this. Do this exactly as I say here. I, I'm not really into that. Um, so I'm strengthening some shadows that I see need strengthening, especially here you saw at the bottom. There was an area around the lip. Now, look at how the lip is still inaccurate. It's not clear enough. Like It's missing some highlights on the side that's farther from us. It feels a little awkward. So that's something I'm, I'm hopefully going to focus with the opaque paint. Now, other things that have been lost that I just didn't really either try or do a good enough of a job preserving are these subtle highlights. So the I, the white of the eye here needs to be lighter. The eyelid at the bottom, right, needs to be a little stronger. And I'm going over this and sometimes I'm seeing something that doesn't really need to be lighter, but I think it will enhance the impression. Uh, you will see me adding on the lips or maybe I'll skip that, but you will see the lip. Look at that, I added a bunch of highlights there, right? I lost some of my way, but not fully. And I think it still works and plays and, and tells the story really well. Now at least the smile is there exactly as I wanted it to. The nose isn't as accurate. I think the eye coming up and creating a negative shape around it could be improved. Uh, but but it's getting there. It's pretty close. Again, it's not 100, it's 90, whatever. Uh, and I'm using this opaque paint to sculpt out the details that are missing, right? And that's perfectly okay. Um, one thing I've been playing around with a lot is to just be agnostic towards the tools I'm using and the process I'm following and focus instead more on the end result I'm trying to achieve. So as long as the end result I'm trying to achieve, um, as long as I get that, I honestly don't really care as much about how I get there. Whether it's opaque paint, bring in paint, another layer of paint, fewer layers of paint, Filling in entire areas with opaque paint, that's perfectly fine. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed this process and I hope you gained an insight or something to think about. Again, you find the answers, you got them. Um, and if you do want to learn, especially if you want to learn how to paint like this, I have the watercolor realism course, you'll find a link below. That shows you a few really good um, portrait processes in particular and how to approach them with the purpose of getting the likeness down pretty closely like this one but also having the light and shadow tell a good story and be realistic, talking a lot about shapes, um, edges, values, a lot of things that are just core to 